Welcome to session six of Bust Out of Service Fatigue. This one is called a Showtime Mindset. Now, you probably have all heard the phrase, fake it till you make it. It's a reminder that even when you don't feel like performing at your best, sometimes you have to act like it to make it so. So when it comes to busting out of our service fatigue and getting back to customer service excellence, I call it being showtime ready. And trust me, it makes all the difference in the world. So let me tell you a little bit about my introduction to showtiming. I was about 19 when I started at a large ophthalmic clinic in Northern Illinois, and they were known for their customer service. Patients came from miles around and said it was the best healthcare experience they'd ever had. And we had a couple secrets to our delivery of great customer service. And it's actually how I became a professional speaker because so many industries were interested in what were we doing that was different that they kept calling up and saying, hey, can you come and tell us your secrets? My doctor looked around and he said, Lori, you like to talk, you go. And so I spent quite a few years gathering up the things that I felt and that our owners felt were the things that we did that were different, that set us apart when it came to service excellence. And I really believe that show timing is one of the major differentiators. So let me explain. It's a lot like actors on a stage. If you've ever gone to a Broadway play, it's likely that a lot of the actors behind the backdrop, behind the red curtain, may not be getting along all that well because there's stress, there's conflict, and there's ego. And if you've ever been even in community theater, you have probably run across that behind the stage, there's a lot of this. But you know what? When the curtain goes open and the auditorium is filled with paying guests, who can't wait to see what the performance is, those actors step out from behind the curtain and they do the role that they're being paid to do. You will not see an actor step out of character, look out into the audience and go, you think he's a nice guy here? You should see what he's like back there. No, they stay in character. And interestingly enough, even a small child innately knows this. When they're playing the cow in the kindergarten play, they usually stay in the role of cow. They just know they're supposed to do that. It's an innate thing. So early on, we taught our employees, in fact, on one of the first two days of employment, we would teach them the showtime method. And it's basically the same as I just described to you. When the lights go on and the doors are open, it's showtime. That means that the conflicts are going to happen behind the curtain. And were there conflicts? Oh yeah, I worked with over a hundred people and I believe that wherever two or more are gathered, there's trouble. You're going to have conflicts because we're people, but those conflicts never took place in front of our patients. And when they did take place behind a closed door, we were expected to keep the volume at a level where the conflicts could be kept confidential. So when we started our day with the smile and the energy, were there days I didn't feel like it? Oh yeah, plenty of days. But our job was to be just like those actors behind the backdrop. Our costume was the uniform and the name tag we put on every day. The audience, those were our patients, or in your case, it may be customers or patrons that you're taking care of. And we want them to enjoy their experience so, so that they buy a ticket and come again or tell their friends what a great experience it was. We had many people say that we were the Disney world of eye care, which I think is one of the biggest compliments that you can get. Is your organization the Disney world of your industry? It all starts with the people. Now you may be wondering, Lori, what does this have to do with service fatigue? Well, I believe that if you make it part of your culture to bring that showtime energy forward, it's contagious. Because if there are three of us answering the phone and we're all showtiming it, it begins to wear off with each other. How often do you catch one of your team members or even yourself telling customers what's going on behind the curtain? Information, they don't need to know. We've all done that at one time or another, and that's when we're stepping out of character and telling the audience member what's happening behind that backdrop. This is also true virtually. It isn't just when the lights go on and the doors unlock and people come in your front door. It's also 
when we are remotely taking care of them. Just yesterday, I talked to a large organization that has a customer service call center. They manufacture an item that's sold at Lowe's and Walmart, and they have over 100 calls a day that come into their call center with people asking questions, asking for uh, broken parts to be replaced, or sometimes just venting. And they were sharing that although everyone's been trained what to do, they're a little fatigued. They had heard about this series and they were interested in me coming in and sharing some of my concepts to help them bust out of service fatigue. So they're going to hear a lot of the things that you've been hearing through the six part series, but I can tell you this one show timing is likely where I'm going to start. Why? Because it's where it all starts. If you are feeling fatigued at home because of home drama or you're burning the candle at both ends, it's really hard to get in the car and then show up with the kind of energy that it takes to do a job. What about monotonous jobs? Do you catch yourself saying the same thing over and over again so that it sounds robotic as if you're not really present in the conversation? I'm always on high alert for that when I'm doing business with others because I'm always looking for examples of it. But think about the actors who have been doing, let's say, Hamilton for years on Broadway. Well, with the small break during COVID. But other than that, they've been doing it repeatedly for years. Many are the same actors. And so what do they do? Well, they dig deep and they make it part of their job to bring that energy forward. Um, those of you who are with me today who are professional speakers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We don't always show up on stage with the same energy. We have to find it and create it. And those of you who are with me on the call live today in all of your individual industries, the exact same rule applies. So when it's show time, it's go time. But service fatigue keeps us from summoning that energy that it takes to be game ready at the start of each new day. So what are some of the things you can do? Well, we talked about this a little bit in one of our earlier series, uh, uh, excuse me, one of our earlier episodes in this series, but I want you to learn to give yourself a pep talk. Find the mantra, take a couple deep breaths, do what you need to do to shift your mindset and your attitude so that as soon as you're open for business, you're ready for showtime. Because the reality is, if you can shift your attitude it's actually very difficult not to raise your energy levels to match and bust through this service fatigue. So while I get ready to tell you my next story, for those of you who've been able to join me live and thank you for being here, I'm going to ask you to tell me in the chat if you have an example of anything that you or your team does to make sure that that showtime game ready level energy is ready for your people. Go ahead and put it in the chat and I'm going to share one of my favorite stories about this. One time I was giving a program at a large eye care event and everybody in the room were managers and executive directors and staff members of optometric clinics. Well, about two weeks after the event, I received a phone call from one of the attendees. And she said, hey, if I could catch you for a moment, I need to tell you a story. And she said, you know that whole thing you did about show timing? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, there are about six of us at the conference. And on the way home, well, I gotta tell you, we were making fun of you. I said, great, tell me more. And she said, well, we were just kind of laughing about the fact that you were encouraging us to huddle up every morning and get in a showtime mindset. So she goes, we decided, and I want this noted, I did not recommend this. They came up with this idea. They're making fun of me, but they came up with this idea. They said that after they huddled up every morning before office hours, they decided to put their hands in the middle to be game ready. And they would go, it's showtime. And she said, for the first couple of times they did it, they all laughed because they thought it was funny. She, and, and she said, but what I wanted to share with you is after having us do this for two weeks, I've noticed two really important things. The first one is everybody's energy is higher. We start the day with a laugh. And as we keep doing it, we're looking forward to the huddle and this mantra that we've created. She said, but here's the second advantage. I had one staff member who always shows up for late for work. She kind of slides in at the last minute. And now that we do a morning huddle, her absence is noticed, which means she needs to show up to work on time. Well, simply by her showing up on time to be in the huddle, to do the show timing, 
the rest of the staff's energy has come up because they're no longer covering for her and watching her slide in late. So while they started out making fun, they realize that there is something to what I'm talking about. I want you to really think about what it would be like to huddle up with your team and maybe you're all virtual and just jumping on together real quick before you start your day is just what people need to get started. In our clinic, we used to gather for just a few minutes every morning and we would share what's going on today, who's out sick, what adjustments do we need to make? And generally we ended it with somebody giving a type of quote that was motivational. I used to think that that was a little silly, um, but I found over time that actually, you know, it really did, it did make a difference when we heard the quotes. And uh, I just, you can see I got distracted because I saw one come in. So thank you for sharing. Um, this comes from one of our attendees today. It says, one of our clerks leaves inspirational quotes at the desk for other team members. Most shifts only see one other person, but they leave messages for all of them. Fantastic. And I know some of you listening, thank you for sharing. I know that some of you may think, oh, motivational quotes and rolling your eyes. Then if not that, what can it be? Maybe it's not a quote. Maybe it's just a little um, inspiration to each other. It, it can make a huge difference. I want to give you another example, real life out there, where I saw show timing fail. See, the thing about show timing is it's show time, go time, all the time. That means not just when somebody's watching, but consistently when the doors are open, even when you think no one's watching. Well, a few years ago, I was getting on a flight from Chicago O'Hare to Rapid City, South Dakota. And right before the plane took off, the pilot came out of the cockpit and he took the microphone from the flight attendant and he said, everybody, everybody look up here. Well, of course, we kind of ignored him at first. And he said, I said, everybody look up here. Well, of course, we're all looking up thinking maybe something's wrong. We're taking our earbuds out. We're waiting to see what he has to say. And he says, all right, everybody, here's the deal. I'm going to tell you two jokes and you're going to laugh, clap, cheer. I don't care. Boo me if you want, but noise has to come out of you. And if you have done that after each of the jokes, then I'll fly you to Rapid City. We're all kind of looking at each other. And by the way, this was not on Southwest Airline. We've come to expect that kind of show timing from them. But this particular airline, who will remain nameless, this particular airline uh, is not known for this. So he proceeds to tell us two sixth grade level jokes. I don't remember the first one, but I'm going to tell you the second one so you can get a real sense of what this moment felt like. Here it is. All right, people, here's your second joke. You ready? What kind of bagels do pilots eat? Plain. The whole plane. We were booing, clapping. There was two guys in the back going, woo, 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 right? The energy in the plane went way up. And I have to say, it's one of the most enjoyable flights I've ever been on. The people were a little kinder to each other. They chit-chatted. The flight attendants gave us the whole can of Diet Coke. It was a good flight. And I planned that when we landed in Rapid City, I was going to wait in the tarmac for the pilot to deplane. And I was going to ask permission to interview him on the spot, selfie style with my phone, where I could ask him, where did you come up with this idea? Did you need permission? What difference have you noticed that it makes? Why are you doing it? I had all these questions planned. I was very enthusiastic about the social media shout out that I could do for this pilot. But he missed the third part of the quote. Showtime, go time. What was it? All the time. See, there were about six or seven of us that had valet checked our bags. So we were standing in that gangplank thing that goes from the plane to the terminal waiting for our bags. And the pilot got off the plane. He's represented by this finger. This is funny pilot. And coming down the tarmac is a second pilot represented by this finger. And they meet right in front of me. Now, I want to give you some warning. There's a baby bad word coming up. So if you are sensitive to foul language, you might want to mute me for just a second, right? But this is exactly as it happened. They meet in front of me and funny pilot has forgotten He's still on stage. The six or seven of us standing here are the same audience members that were on the plane. And this is the conversation. Hey man, how you doing? Pretty good, how about you? Good. 
hey, did you hear anything about this plane? Nope, didn't hear a thing. Well, it's a piece of junk. He used a worse word than that. And so this one says, what a drag. They high five and they switch places. I look at the businessman standing next to me and he says, wow, that was something. We were both shocked that the pilot would say that because safety, the number one thing we care about when we fly, he just exposed it in front of passengers. So I didn't chase him down and I didn't interview him. And instead I told the story of the pilot and put it out to social media, but I did not tell the name of the airlines. I did not indicate the date I was flying. I didn't use the pilot's name because I believe that if by some quirk of a couple extra clicks, my video story ended up on an executive's desk at this airlines, that pilot could be fired. And you know what? He would deserve to be fired. You do not take safety and put that in the doubt of the people who are flying your airline. It's a moment where he took showtime at its utmost perfection. And he downgraded it by forgetting that he was still on stage. There were many other ways he could have had that conversation with the other pilot, but he didn't choose any of them because we had become invisible. I tell you this story, and, and you might have noticed I did leave out the naughty word. I just couldn't get myself to say it out loud on a webinar, but he used a foul word, right? And so he add that to the list for the people who might be sensitive to that kind of language. I tell this story because I want you to think about, are there times when you or your team member, you know how to show time when you're supposed to, but you forget sometimes and your customer becomes invisible. Having done secret shopping for over 15 years as a division of my company, you cannot believe the things I have seen when we have become invisible at the places where we're shopping. It is an extremely valuable lesson in show timing. So here's your homework. You know you always have some. For this session, I want you to commit to show time every time. Get your whole team on board if you can, making a commitment to a showtime attitude that trains your brain to recognize that when it's game on, it's time to perform at your best. And if coworkers, staff, and teammates are on board, all the better. Showtiming is contagious, and no one wants to be left out of the party. The exhaustion that you're feeling and your team is feeling, it is real, and there's no single way to bust out of it. While you work on setting boundaries and getting enough rest, consider committing to a showtime mentality and, and be ready at all times to give clients the service they deserve. So everyone, we're at the end of this six-part series. Let me briefly recap for you. We started out with motivation and morale, then boundaries, Captain Cascade and attitude trickles down. We talked about how to allow the joy and how rest can be productive. And we wrapped up today with a Showtime Mindset Magic. I wanna thank you for joining me through the series. And if I can be of support to you and your organization, don't hesitate to reach out because together we can bust out. Thanks for being here, everybody.